Hey folks and welcome back. So this is going to be part five of the video series for my B36 project I had. If you don't know much about the project, go back on my YouTube and find the overview video which explains everything about it. If you are not familiar with my B36 project, uh, it's a project I spent four or five years building. I got it just about ready to fly kind of ran out of money in the hobby and then somebody offered me an enormous amount of money for the airplane I sold it and it paid for my hobby so that's the backstory but uh, let's get into this at the end of this there will be video of me testing the system so I'm not going to uh, bog down uh, this video in the middle of it with a bunch of video uh, if you want to hang around to the end and watch some of the test video of the ailerons being actuated in the flaps then you can do that okay so if you're not familiar with my B36, it was a 257 inch behemoth and uh, it was just the coolest thing that I had ever designed. So let's get into the full screen mode here. So what we're going to talk about today is the ailerons and flaps and how they were constructed, designed and uh, uh, fabricated. First, I want to talk about my sponsor, RTL Fasteners. If you need bolts, nuts, uh, screws, washers, uh, blind nuts, any of the cool things we use in the RC industry, uh, go to rtlfasteners.com, use code DA30, and you can get 30% off any order over 50 bucks. So when you think about this project, um, I want you to kind of consider... Um, that I was able to get documents and drawings uh, of the real B36 from people. Now, if you still go to the Smithsonian Institute, you can actually buy for like $2,500 or $3,000 the entire set of drawings that Convair um, donated to the Smithsonian. You get copies of it, of course, not the originals. So <clears throat> I kind of tried to look at the way the real one's built and see if that could apply mechanically to the way that my model was going to be built. And many principles were the same. So what I wanted to do with these ailerons <clears throat> is basically build a top and bottom half of the airfoil that would have uh, a flat piece of balsa wood running through the middle of it. And then the outsides would end up being shield, uh, sheeted. That way I could build it somewhat uh, flat and um, true on a table. The hinge lines, I wanted to be just really super simple, okay? And, but I wanted them to be at the scale geometry so that they would move properly. One of the things about the uh, B36, it being so large, is it ended up having over 40 some servos throughout the entire airplane. And to get the ailerons to actuate right and to get everything to work properly, um, I knew that um, just about every flying service would take a minimal of two servos. So there were six flaps, you know, that right there is 12 servos, and then you've got the two ailerons, that's another four. So, you know, pretty quickly the servos were really being used, eaten up on, the, on the, just the wing. So when we, this is a hard to see picture here, but this is where I was gluing the bottom skin on the aileron itself and trying to keep it square. And it was really interesting because these were really long ailerons and I was afraid that they want to twist. And I wanted to build kind of a box structure throughout the length of the aileron so there'd be some rigidity there. Now I knew I was going to be controlling it from two separate ailerons. It wasn't going to be like one aileron at the uh, the inside trying to twist it. But um, it, it, there was just an awful lot that I was trying to think down the road is, how is this really going to work? Um, this doesn't make much sense, but it will in a minute. But I had to make sure there was a way to have a hinge line and a servo control point because I don't, I don't like... Uh, servo horns sticking out of my airplanes. I want the airplane to look l real where it's buried, you know, in the trailing edge of the wing. This is another picture of kind of how the uh, center section of the wing was, I mean, the center section of the aileron or the aileron was built up on a flat piece of balsa wood. This is uh, kind of kind of hard to see, but if you look, you, you see the servo here. And then down here, you see uh, the, the hinge line, which is basically almost, uh, it's hard to see the hinge line. 
and then you've got where the input of the servo is uh, to the aileron. Uh, this doesn't show up much better. If you don't know what this is right here, this was going to be a piece of landing gear wire as a counterbalance for the aileron. Most of my large airplanes have all the flying surfaces counterbalanced like real aircraft, and that way they won't flutter in the air. This right here gives you a little bit better idea of what I was doing. So you can see the hinge line here, the uh, servo control rod coming down here to the bottom of the aileron. And um, I had not cut the hatch in the bottom of the uh, wing. I was going to wait till I glassed it and everything and then build my ha hatch in so I could get to that servo if the servo ever went bad. That's another hard thing with really giant airplanes is, believe it or not, it, you've got to figure out where you're going to build your hatches to get the, uh, uh, the servos in and out. And this gives you an idea looking from the bottom where I had just roughed in the hole of how the uh, control arm was going to move the aileron. And like I said at the end, there'll be a video where you can watch all of this kind of tested. Here's a little bit better picture. So when you, when you look at the aileron being deflected here, I normally on a model aircraft will go about three or four degrees farther than the real airplane required and i i do that just because of a gut feeling i it, look i know that there's a big difference in the way the air molecules work on a real full-scale airplane versus a model but when you get into this size of a model we're really getting closer to the uh i don't know if the words physics is the right word but we're getting into the the realm of uh how a real airplane really is uh mimicked I guess is the best word but that's pretty much how the ailerons were set up as I said at the end watch the video you can see them actuate and they're pretty cool now what we're going to talk about is the flaps and the flaps took an enormous amount of time for me to get this geometry right I was sent a picture of a b36 without the flaps on it but I saw these two control arms hanging and I'll, I'll talk about those control arms in a minute when I open up my fusion 360 but I can see these two swing like, oh, I shouldn't use the word control arms. That's the wrong phrase. They, they're like swing arms. And they were just hanging off the trailing edge of the B-36. And I'm like, what are those? And, what, and how did the flaps work? Then I found another picture and saw a flap just sitting on the ground at a place where a B-36 was being restored. And I started putting one and one together and saying, okay, if those two swing arms connected to those two points, is that the way that the flap would swing back and rotate down? So what I decided to do, now this is version one of my flaps, okay? I've had a couple of people uh, that's bought my drawings and they get a little bit confused here. And there were two version of flaps because I had two wings. If you watch the wing video, there's wing version one and wing version two. And the reason I had to have two separate ones is because the landing gear wouldn't fit in the first one uh, because I got misled by the people making my landing gear. So I cut this out on version one. I cut all of these parts out, which were gonna hold the servos, okay? And this is, um, you can make this out of plywood, you can make this out of fiberglass, you can make this out of aluminum if you have a way to cut the aluminum. Uh, I just use all kinds of different materials in this airplane. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what these are made out of as long as they're strong enough to hold that servo. And these were all the parts and on the right you can see the little control arms, but it's easier to see here that we had the flaps, we had the servo mounts, and at the top we had the uh, swing arms uh, or control arms. You know, I like to use the word control arm on anything that's controlling the movement of something. So the way that those swing arms hung in there, they, they hung just like this. And to get that geometry right so that the actual flap uh, went through the proper uh, geometry when it was deployed, took me a lot of time. Now, I was drawing this at the time in 3DS Max. I didn't have Fusion 360, so I kept tweaking where the holes were until I got it right. And ultimately, uh, it worked really good. This is all the parts it took for one uh, hinge point on the flap. And here we're going to look just at the uh, flaps kind of in the up position. And then I would physically take my hand and swing it down to this position. 
and then I would swing it down to this position. So it was, it, it was trying to prove to me that they were mechanically working right. So if you look at the flap, here's a flap all the way up. Flap deployed a little bit and the flap deployed full. And I was super excited at this point that just physically I could move them and that they worked so well. Um, keep in mind, there's just a lot that goes on here to make sure these fit in between the nacelles and everything worked right. Um, here was when I was going into flap version two, you notice there's little eighth inch by quarter inch cuts now in the actual flap ribs, uh, the airfoils. All I did, so you know, is I didn't change the holes hardly at all on this uh, for where the geometry swung it. I just randomly put eighth inch by quarter inch slots in this and then put the control hole for the control servo um, on an exact line between the two eighth inch slots that fit at the top of that radius. This is what they look like. Now this was cut out of birch eighth inch ply. There's all of them looking all sexy and cut. Now I hand cut everything on a bandsaw and use my um, sanders, uh, my belt sander, just to clean everything up. So I do not have a laser cutter. It just takes patience, people. This is what they looked like when I was putting them together. And then this was all of them uh, ready to go into the wing. And uh, this was slicker than snot. I mean, this was just really, really neat. Now, I did program, and you'll see at the end of this when I actuate them, I programmed the servos, they were high-tech, to move 180 degrees. And that way, when the flaps were up, they were locked in place, and when they were down, they were locked in place. They weren't putting any load on the servo at all. And this is the new version mounted, but this shows you how I was gonna get the flaps, uh, the servos in and out of the wing. On the left, that little birch block <clears throat> was going to be uh, basically uh, held into the wing with two little bitty micro screws. I would pop that out. I would turn this mechanism sideways, and then I would pull it out of the wing. So that's how I was going to service the flap servos. And here is another uh, view of the flaps being deployed, which I just thought was slicker than snot. All the way down. Here's another. Now there's video at the end of this. Going down. All the way down. So that is this part. So hang on a minute. I'm going to get back to here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to my Fusion 360. And I'm going to share that screen. And I want you to understand that. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you want all this geometry and stuff, you can email me. I'll put my email in this video, or you can join my Patreon for like five bucks and download all my Fusion 360 designs, all of my CAD drawings, all of my stuff. I'll put a link in this video to my Patreon because people are really starting to ask about that. And I'm not trying to pimp my Patreon here. Uh, I really put my Patreon up because at one time I had given away all my files for free. And then people started stealing them and saying that there were theirs and putting them on websites trying to make money off it. At least with my Patreon, you might feel guilty if you take and steal my, my designs and try to sell them as your own. So let's pop back over. So this is my Fusion 360 of the flap. And what I'm going to do here is open up this motion study. And when I move the motion study, you will see the flap deploy and come back up, okay? So that is how the flap works. Now, if you wanna see how the geometry in it works, this is how the geometry works. And it really is slicker than snot. Now, I've had a couple of people say, well, wait a minute, you got a control hole up here on your B36 2.0 wing, you had it up here on the rib. It doesn't matter how you move this rib, okay? Some people wanted to put it right here. Some people want to put it up here. It doesn't matter how you do that, okay? It just, it's irrelevant. Um, I've also had people say, hey, would this design work on a C-130? Well, the C-130 actually had moving tracks. I'm going to do a video on my C-130. 
So it, it's not exactly scale at all. And then I had people say, well, what about the B29? Well, the B29, believe it or not, had sliding tracks too. But if you wanted to cheat a little bit, this flap would work on anything you want to put on uh, just, just for the kind of a scale movement looking a little bit more like a Fowler flap or something like that. Okay. So that's it, everybody. So look, if you haven't liked and subscribed by now, please do it. I'm trying to build my YouTube. Um, I'm trying to give my YouTube a lot more of my time. And you know, I've got an air bike project, which is an ultralight going on. And then I have my RC world. I'm doing in-depth videos on my B36, which you just watched. I'm doing it on my MSL-1, which was my vintage airplane. I'm doing it on the MSL-2, which is my vintage like 1929 air racer. And I'm also going to do a video series on my C-130. So in all, there's like 24, 25 videos over the next three or four months I'm going to try to get on my YouTube. And of course, I'm going to try, I've got one coming up on wing washout and how to design a wing with wing washout and all that stuff and what the washout does for you. So I will see you next time and you have a great day. Rock on, be safe, and please get a kid involved in aviation. Letting them sit in video games all day, murdering people, driving around in cars and just killing random people isn't the best way to understand aviation. And aviation is the gateway drug to physics and math and just all kinds of kick-ass stuff. Okay? So rock on, everybody. See you next time. Be safe and take a kid flying. See ya.